still with minimum price, huh? Any questions so far? So far, no, huh? Now, basically, maximum price and minimum price, they are for government intervention or price intervention or price control. The reason why they want to do it, okay, so it's similar. We'll look at what is minimum price and why they want to do it. Now, price set by authorities that forbid seller from selling below it. Minimum price. Cannot sell cheaper than that. You have to sell at that price. Now, ensure income of producer. Now, this is important, huh? Okay, now in terms of agriculture, especially, okay, farmers up, okay, their costs are pretty high, but then the price of the goods is very volatile. Okay, the price of durian, uh, the price of whatever, it goes up and down and it goes very, very crazy. Okay, so what happened is if the price goes down, the producers will lose their income and they cannot lose their income for one year, two years, three years. If they lose their income for one or two years, then that's it, they're going to go out of business. So when they go out of business, we will not have any producer. We cannot produce food anymore. So we want to make sure that we can produce food. So what we do is we give a minimum price to the producer. We'll tell them it doesn't matter what the market price. If the market price is higher, you sell to the market. If the market price goes lower than this price, you bring your goods to me and you sell me at this price. So this is called minimum price. Okay. So ensure stability. Okay. Now, sometimes minimum price is also used to discourage the consumption of certain goods. Okay, now secret, what is the minimum price? You know we have a minimum price in secret. In Malaysia, you cannot get a pack of secret lower than 17 ringgit, right? So you will get 17 something, 18 ringgit, right? So basically one pack. So that's why you see the pack once upon a time when I was very young at the time, I don't know what year, 20 years ago. Okay, you can get a secret pack of only 7.6 or 8.6. Okay, now no, uh, now all big, big, right? Now it's either 26, uh, 24, uh, they, they, they are all, all lost sticks. Uh. The, the reason is because they cannot sell lower than that. They cannot sell the, the pack of cigarettes $6, $7. No, they want uh, $17. Okay, so if you sell $17, how does that discourage smoking? Yes. And not affordable. Who cannot afford? Number one, the lower income. Number two, the young people, uh, students, uh, right? So if you want to uh, discourage uh, uh, students from smoking, uh, maybe you all can, uh, but uh, maybe some of you all can, uh, but a lot of students or most students actually, they cannot afford, right? In their secondary and all those things are uh, 17 ringgit a pack, they cannot afford. So you price them up. So it's good to stop people, especially a uh, 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 lower age, right? Secondary school student from starting to smoke. But then if you if you if you take it out from the low income, then it's it's not fair, isn't it? You see the problem, right? right? So the low income say, you know, I should have a choice, right? So in prices like that, I, I cannot afford to smoke. So this this is the problem. Huh? Okay. So if you say that no, but smoking is bad for you, uh, then you become what? You become normative already. You think no smoking is not good for you, right? So the low income will tell you, I think for myself, okay, what is good for me, what is not good for me, but at least I, I, I want to have the choice. But if you give me that price, I don't have the choice. So it is a problem of equity, right? That means a problem of fairness, okay? So so this is this is the problem, my friends. So when you have high minimum price for demerit goods like cigarette, then you have this problem, right? We don't quite sure, uh, what do you call it? Uh, smoking is bad. But what about alcohol? Is alcohol good or bad? Right? Some people say alcohol is like what? I'm not promoting alcohol here. <laughs> okay? Alcohol is like fire and like that, right? When you're small, you're friend. When you're big, you have, a, you have to fight a career. So alcohol is... A lot of people, when they drink, they, they, they actually don't... Uh, how to say? They are social drinkers. Uh, once a while, they will drink. Or maybe once a week, they will drink. And they don't drink a lot. Right, they don't cause problem. Now the cause problem is the minority, the small group of people, maybe uh five percent or maybe three percent. Now those drink a lot. Okay, when they drink a lot, when they are sick, then the government have to pay. Use taxpayers' money, right? When they got liver cancer, now they got all these problems. So this this actually cause to the third party. But okay, when you are drunk and then you go and drive, what happened? Yes, you cause accident. You kill other people, you destroy the traffic light, you destroy uh, public things, okay? So it's basically, it's, it's very bad. So basically, that is the problem. But people will over-consume alcohol, 
right? Because we call it the value good. So what do we do? We put a minimum price on alcohol. So minimum price, you cannot actually uh, buy alcohol below that price. So we want to reduce the consumption, right? So this is the aims of, of minimum minimum price. Now, how does it work? Now, the government put a minimum price, usually above the equilibrium. They can put it below, but no use up. And say now, if you put it below, that means they, they, they cannot sell anything lower than that. So the price will go back to equilibrium. It's not effective, right? So usually they will put a price above the market price. So when you put it above the market price, demand is here, Q1, but supply is here. So you get oversupply. You can see that. So you may have a problem if you have minimum price is you have oversupply. So this is this is how they work. Huh? Now, uh, what is this? Huh? This is uh, foreign foreigners who want to buy property in Malaysia. Okay, we put a minimum price. Now below this price, uh, is it this, this? Yeah, below certain price, you, you cannot buy. Like let's say you want to buy a property in KL, below 1 million, they cannot buy. Okay, so we want those property below 1 million available only for Malaysian. If the foreigners come in and start stepping up, you know what, wouldn't be so cheap, you know, they can just buy Of prices uh, uh, of, of uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, a property which is below 1 million. So above 1 million, be below mine. Okay, come, you can buy, but all this below, okay? Penang, mainland is 1 million, but an island is 2 million, my God. Okay, they cannot get anything cheaper than 2 million, right? So this is minimum price. Huh? All right, now, uh, now government intervention here. Now, minimum price sometimes is called a guarantee price. Now, for this to work, okay, for minimum price to work, what happened is uh, just now we see from the diagram there is excess supply, right? So the government need to buy up all this excess supply. They cannot just leave it in the market. If they leave it in the market, then we have a problem, okay? So generally, this, this is what happened. Uh, the government will more, more or less take a guarantee price. Now, if you have a guarantee price, you've got two problems. Number first, problem number one is expensive. You have to buy it. Problem number two is what are you going to do with the stocks? That's it. So you, let's say you have a minimum price for milk, okay? So you tell the milk producer, we give you this price. So what happened? The milk producer overproduced. You buy everything from the milk producer and then you sell it to the market at that price, minimum price. But then, let's say you buy uh, uh, 1,000 liter, but you can only sell 200 liter. So you still stuck with 800 liter. Another 1,000 liter extra. So the milk will just go higher and higher and higher. So what will happen in the end? You just have to throw it away, that's all. Right, and then you have a moral question. You why you throw food? Uh, this are new, uh, hello, right? So basically, this is the problem with uh, uh, minimum price. Okay, so the issue is minimum price number one, oversupply. Okay, number two is actually a waste of resources. Okay, oversupply is a waste of resources. You are supplying, you are producing too much, you are using resources to produce, but these are the resources that's not used. Okay, number three is contraband. So, what is contraband? illegal right so things that import export illegal they don't go through the custom or in the in, in the illegal market okay the minimum price is here okay uh i don't know if you have tried this or not uh i don't know how many of you smoking here right <laughs> if you do if you do okay if you go to mama store at night okay or even in the morning okay mama store this mama store they will sell cigarette per piece per stick Right, one stick they sell you, okay, or even even packet. Now sometimes they they they, they a lot of stores they will sell cigarettes very uh, much cheaper than what you can get outside. Right, so basically that is called contraband. Can say that. Right, say let's say uh Dunhill manufactured in some other countries in China like that. When they export to Malaysia, they get tax. Okay, so the company Dunhill in Malaysia when they sell, they get very very high taxes, and then they have to keep the minimum price. But then there's a lot of uh, 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 cigarette also done deal from the same factory, but they smuggle in. They smuggle in, that means they don't go through the tax. So this is what we mean by contraband. Now this is article, I think it's about two or three years ago, uh, 2021. Okay, now Malaysia have a huge problem uh, with a global leader in illegal cigarette trade. Right, Malaysia number one now. <laughs> okay, illegal. Now how big is it? 
64% of total cigarettes sold in Malaysia today are illegal, translating roughly to 12 billion sticks in contraband cigarettes sold in a year. Huge problem. Huh? Okay. Now, the issue is part of Malaysia's shadow economy, which, uh, okay, this is just a shadow economy. The government already announced steps to address illegal cigarette trade during the tabling bu budget 2020. The issuance of import licenses for cigarettes. Okay, so this is a problem. If you have a minimum price, you need to police. And here is quite clearly that they fail to to tackle contraband. Okay, this uh, what do you call it? Cigarette market uh, is many times larger than the drug market. Okay, right? so it is it, really really big because the market is much bigger. The people who smoke is a lot more than people who take drugs, uh, right? Heroin and all those things. Uh. Okay, now recent round table by NSC, the Shadow Economy newspaper columnist, investment analyst, commentator say demographics of smokers today are dominated by the B40 segment. So most people who smoke nowadays belong to the B40, right? Now, assuming a packet of 20 cigarettes costs 17 40 cents, if one smoked 20 packets a month, not even one pack a day, uh, that's 350 a month equivalent to 16% of our current poverty line at 2,280 per month. You see, no? so because cigarette is so expensive, the legal one, people go and buy the illegal one. Right, so how do you solve the problem? Reduce from seventeen dollars maybe to seven dollars. Right, so of course maybe one pack they don't get so many sticks ah, they get less sticks ah, but basically price for cigarette will be cheaper. So that will reduce the reduce the contraband. Okay, contraband the government don't get taxes. If you have no contraband, the government will get will get uh they get taxes. Okay. Oh, they didn't say here. Basically, it's a huge, I don't know how many millions of dollars we are getting in taxes. We are losing all the tax money, right? Either way, people will still smoke the same amount. So if you want people to smoke less, maybe you should try some other thing other than minimum price. That's what they're trying to say. Okay, get okay, so this is what? This is positive economics. We don't say it's good or bad. We just say that if you have minimum price, this is what happens. If you if you lower the minimum price, this is what happens. Positive economics, right? But normative, some people will say no, this cannot. No, right? Smoking are bad. You know, you should you should actually raise the minimum price to thirty ringgit. What the heck? Okay, so these are all based on normative. Okay, okay. Now you look at the case of alcohol. Now, if you want people to drink less, you can have minimum price. But besides minimum price, you can also have indirect tax. Indirect tax, that means if you drink alcohol, they take, okay, tax is 30%. So immediately the price will become 30% more expensive. And see now, both also can. Uh, you can use indirect tax or you can use minimum price. A uh, minimum price is better. Why? Let's say uh, brandy, uh, the brandy. You tax them 50%. Now the brandy is 300 ringgit. People don't want to buy brandy. Yeah. But if I'm an alcoholic, what would I do? I'll drink whiskey. <laughs> Cheaper. Ma. Whiskey, $100. 50% discount is only $150. If the tax increase some more, nearby, I drink toddy. You know what's toddy? Huh? Okay, from the coconut. Okay, you have all the alcohol. So basically, people can move down. Okay, but if you put a minimum price, whack, lower price, you got no alternative. So it is more effective minimum price in terms of restricting alcohol consumption. Okay, but the advantage of indirect tax is what? Government get money. Lah. Government got tax revenue. Okay, minimum price, you don't get tax revenue. Okay, now what about education? You can educate people, right? Tell them that actually drinking is bad for you, right? You shouldn't be drinking, right? For your health reason and all those things. Then this, you shift the demand curve. Then you don't have the problem of overconsumption. Okay? Good enough. What is the weakness in this education? Does it work or not? No, you sure? It may it may work, it may not, right? So we don't know. Number two is long term. When it comes to drinking and alcohol, it's all based on 
individual decision, right? You can tell them all the things, you can give them all the reasons, but end of the day, they go back, uh, they just forget it. Some people, they may change, some people, they may not. So here, very uncertain, right? So if you want to prevent or reduce people from drinking, we know drinking is bad, what do you do? Huh? You do all three. First, you put a minimum price, then you tax them, then you give them education, right? And you hope that basically they will drink less. Okay, now UK have a very, very interesting problem here, okay? Other, compared to all the European countries, UK have a huge problem with, 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 with alcohol, right? And they started with kids, right? Like foundation, uh, secondary school even, right? They have bottle, bottle, and they actually for alcohol, right? And they drink, many of them, half the class will become drunk, they come to class, crazy. Okay, I got a student last time, uh, came to me for tuition during holiday, okay? He do A-level in, 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 in UK. He said, my classmate, uh, more than half of them, uh, they are drunk most of the time. Okay, they drunk until, uh, okay, and they are crazy, okay, they, they will just go to the street there, in the middle of the road, they just lie down there and they sleep there. Because they are drunk. Right? Hey, this country are hopeless. Huh? <laughs> uh, you get, the, the problem is really, really bad in, in, in the UK. Uh, the drinking problem, uh, British, we don't know why, they just like to drink so much. Okay? Now you compare that to the French, okay, and also the German. You know, Germans, they the Germany, they, they are the one they come up with all the beers and very nice beer in all in, in German. They, they don't have that problem. They control, okay. They they know how to over over the years all the all this campaign that it works. Alcohol consumption go down. Okay, France, alcohol consumption also go down. But in UK, despite everything they do here, whatever they do, they do exactly the same like what France and Germany did. But in UK, the alcohol consumption went up. Don't know why. Something to do with the British people. <laughs> okay? So basically, this is the thing. Huh? Now, minimum price, the concept also applies to minimum wage. Now, recently, Malaysia raised the minimum wage to 1,500 ringgit. Do you all know that? What does it mean? Whatever job you work, okay, it doesn't matter what job, huh? Your minimum pay is 1,500. The employer cannot pay you less than 1,500. Okay? What is the problem if you have minimum wage or if you have higher minimum wage? Now, the first problem is you will say that, well, minimum wage is high. A lot of shops is going to close, right? A lot, of, you know, they, they hire all these workers. They cannot pay these workers. They cannot hire people. They cannot run a business. They close down, right? So, minimum which the argument used to be is they always create more unemployment, right? So the economists will tell them, uh, will, will say that it is better to just let wage determine in the market, right? Demand and supply, no worry, okay? If you are better, you can work harder, you can earn more, then you can you can fight. So basically, this, this is the problem. So we look at minimum wage. Huh? Now, is minimum wage good or bad? Should we have a higher minimum wage? Now, higher minimum wage means, what does it mean? For you and I, everybody here, that means your pay target will be more expensive. Your chicken rice will be more expensive. Everything will be more expensive. Correct? Huh? Because when I, let's say, I sell chicken rice, I need to pay my workers higher. Consumer. Huh? Okay, so the countries will have higher inflation. Okay? Maybe our higher less people. So higher less people, unemployment. So this is the economic argument. It has been many years already. But now the economic argument tends to change. Huh? You look at the pros. Huh? Advantage of minimum wage, increased income of low-paid workers. All right? So this is important, right? We are basically talking about income. If you have, let's say, less than $1,000 a month, and you have to, you have one wife and you have two kids like that, how are you going to survive? You can't survive, right? Your rental alone, minimum, you have to go, no four people, one unit, 400, maybe you cannot find 500, half your salary gone, right? Then food alone, at least you eat the minimum also, at least, I don't know how much, right? Another 400 gone for the whole family, then you only $100 left for all other things. Suddenly you get sick, then you have a problem. So basically, we need to increase the low pay, right? Incentive to increase labor productivity, correct? Okay. Nowadays, a lot of rider. Why? 
Because grad, right, the, if they are hardworking, okay, it's tough, lah, okay. But if they are hardworking, their salary, I mean, their, their income can go up to four, five thousand dollars a month. Okay, and they go to other jobs, they, they don't want to work. So basically, workers in Malaysia, they are not lazy. But it's just that the pay is very bad. But if, let's say you give them a job of three thousand dollars, okay, they will prefer the three thousand dollars job as a waiter or whatnot compared to a rider. Correct, lah. Because rider is uncertain, you have to wait for call, and then it's dangerous, right? You go here, and then, and then it rains, there are so many problems, okay? So you rather stay in one place, although the salary is slightly lower. But if the, the salary is much lower, let's say you only get 1,005. Compared to a rider, rider, I get 4,000, I'm going to become a rider. And say that. So basically, this is what happened. Uh, increased labor productivity, reduced income inequality, evidence effect on employment. So we look at the evidence, we say, ah, actually, it doesn't really. Why? Because at the bottom, we still need a lot of people to work. We need people to work. So basically, even though the minimum wage goes up, they still have to employ more or less the same amount of people. All right? Increase demand in the economy as low paid earn more. Now, this is very important. Why? Okay? Now, this is what Jeffrey Chai is afraid. Huh? Jeffrey Chai is afraid of what? People who come to Pyramid to shop, they got low income. When they got low income, what happened? They cannot afford it, they don't spend. When they don't spend, the shops cannot make profit. The shops cannot make profit, they will stop renting and then they will lose money. Can see that? Okay, so we need people, on their future, need a lot of people to have high income. Especially low income families to high income. Why? Now, if you have a low income, let's say your salary is 2000 compared to your salary is 10000 Now, 2000 how much you will spend a month? You spend 1008 uh, After you pay all the necessities, do this, do that, uh, maybe your savings is 200 Now, if you spend 10000 if your income 10000 how much you spend a month? Maybe 4000 uh, Right? So, 6000 will go to savings. Can see not? So, every dollar increase for the high income, the amount that goes to spending may be just 40% or 30%. But if you give an extra dollar to the low income, the increase in consumption will go up by maybe 90 cents or 95 cents. Can see that? So if you want the economy to work, to move, you must make the low income higher income. Make sure that they get higher salary, especially for the low income group. So this will increase the demand. If not, our shops will die. The consumption power. So we need people to have the consumption power. Don't put the money in the high income. Put the money in the B40. Right? Put the money there. Ah, that's where they're going to spend. Then we yeah, have M40, T40, whoever, they also will benefit. How they benefit? They got more business. Huh? Can see that? Huh? Right? So basically, it's a win win situation. Huh? It's not a like zero sum game. You know, you lose, I win, I win. You lose. No. You give higher minimum wage, then more business people got more money. They a lot of shops will also be able to start making profit. But now cannot. Now people say, oh, this one expensive, they're all expensive. So we try to cut our spending as much as possible because we've got income is low. Okay? Now, deals with monopsony power of firm. So this is the single seller. Right? Monopsony, that means this monopsony because they are the single, uh, sorry, single buyer. So if you are a single buyer, usually they will pay lower price. Okay, for salary, they will pay low because they are the only employer, they have this more of sorry power. So if you put a minimum wage, you force them to pay higher price, right? Higher salary. Reduces labor turnover. People change job. All right, so now people don't need to change job already. Can see that? So it's important to raise the minimum wage. So Malaysia raised the minimum wage to 1,005. Actually, they've been talking about, you know, since Anwar looked over the government, but the manufacturers keep in the uh, uh, what they call it protesting, right? The manufacturer all these say, no, 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 our business will die. You cannot increase the minimum wage, right? So we force them to increase the minimum wage. So we, the minimum wage is higher. Then we find that even the locals will want to work in the in the in the manufacturing sector and all those things. So we reduce the dependent on foreign labor, right? If we have a lot of foreign labors, then wages will go down. So our low income, the B14, will be affected. So that, that is a problem. 
Yeah. 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 So what we are trying to do now is, or what the government is trying to do now is to increase the overall income of the people, starting with the B40. We try to see how we can raise the income level of the B40 group. All right. Now, so these are the advantages. The disadvantages, firm response by increasing prices. You cannot stop the firm from increasing prices. Because firm is all about profit, right? So basically, you cannot ask people to make losses. Right? So if you increase too much, then you cannot sell. But here, if there's increased demand, then no problem. If you increase prices also, you will have business. You see, that? they counter rent. Okay? Increase too much, it will cause unemployment. True. Right? So minimum wage goes up, raise minimum wage, but not too much. And go it by stages. Right? Maybe we go up by 200 first. Then we go up by another 300. Then we go up by 200. Don't overnight pump like that. <laughs> Die. Okay? They cannot adjust. They need more time to adjust. Could cause restaurants to close. Not just restaurants. Uh, factories and all those things also may be able more close. Okay? But here is the good thing because when higher a, a minimum wage, then they force the firm to innovate. They have to spend on investment. They have to think of how to reduce the wage, the workers and all those things. Okay? Lacks flexibility in recession. If the economy is in recession, the wages cannot go down because minimum wage, there's a law to say you cannot pay lower than this. So during recession, maybe we face more unemployment. So minimum wage may have a problem if the country goes into recession. Lack of geographical flexibility, poor areas hit hard by cost of minimum wage. Okay, so here, if let's say you are in uh, uh, not in KL, right? Maybe you are somewhere in uh, Rawang uh, or maybe somewhere in uh, Telok Intan. Yeah. So basically, the prices are lower there. But if you have a minimum wage of 1,005, the salary there you know, for workers is only 500. Now, 500 or maybe 1,000. Now, 1,000 is okay because everything there, the prices are cheaper. But if you impose minimum wage, it applies across the board, everyone. So this may be a problem for smaller area because minimum wage is national it's a national minimum wage okay so that may be a problem uh could create underground labor markets to avoid regulation okay this is what uh firms will do okay if i have to pay you more money then they will think of other ways maybe they cut your benefit right maybe they extend your working hours say you need to work a bit more hours Maybe you got to do extra things, right? Or maybe you got to do this and that, whatever. So they will, they will think of it. So basically, sometimes we have a problem when we try to raise the minimum wage, right? The employer or the boss will try harder to squeeze you, basically. Okay? Okay? Could encourage automated society with less human interaction. This is not necessarily a bad thing, right? This is not necessarily a bad thing unless you have a lot of, most of the workers are, are how to say, uh, are illiterate, right? Most of the workers are, you know, they don't even have SPM, uh, then they have a problem. So other than that, we push the people to higher uh, uh, productivity, right? Make sure that they get a degree at least, okay? So basically, these are the pros and cons of minimum wage. Right, okay. Any questions? In a nutshell, right? So this is the, this is the whole thing. Right, so maximum wage, uh, maximum price and minimum price, it actually uh, is all around, right? Although we say the free market, you know, are very efficient, they allocate resources, demand and supply, equilibrium, all very beautiful. But in reality, we still have a lot of items which are under maximum price. And the reason is because of this. Okay, now rent control, I think Malaysia, we don't have rent control really. Right, but some countries, they are bringing it back. Right. In US, a few states are stubborn. They always have rent control. Okay. Uh, minimum price, yes, we always have this for the very goods. Alcohol, cigarette, the minimum price. Uh, minimum wage, right? So this is back in trend. Now economists are saying that minimum wage is actually good. We should raise the minimum wage, increase the minimum wage. Right? It's good for the overall economy. And the reason is because the income inequality in Malaysia is too big. The, the, the difference between the high and the low income is very, very large. And this is not healthy. It's not good for the poor. It's also not good for the rich. Huh? Why? Because they got no spending power. 
So you got no spending power, and all this Japanese chat and all those things. Who is going to rent the shop? Nobody. And say, not. so we need that healthy economy, the income inequality should be lesser so that there will be a lot, a lot more demand. Okay, so these are basically in, in, in a nutshell. Okay, any questions? No questions? All right, I think you're quite tired already. Uh, this is what I usually do in my class. Okay, one of the things that I focus is uh, students and you're at your, at your students' time, uh, you must read. Okay, when you read, you know what will happen to you? You become very smart. Okay, you become very attractive. Correct? Smart people are attractive people, no? No, intelligence is at a promise yet, right? So basically, this, this is what happened now. The, the, the thing is, we have a lot of ideas and all these things, the more you read, the smarter you become. Okay, so uh, I just slightly go through some of these books, uh, okay? Uh, new ideas from Dead CEO. This one quite old already, right? It talks about uh, companies like McDonald's, uh, Walmart, uh, and all those things. How their owner, you know, develop. What is what is their challenge? What is the a lot of interesting things here, right? New ideas from dead economists, uh, sorry, dead CEOs. All right. Now then, uh, Malcolm Gladwell, David and Goliath. All right. You all know the story, you know, David and Goliath. All right, Goliath is a general, very big size, and okay, can big. Okay, so one time uh, these two countries in war, so for many many years already. So this guy in the in the Goliath, uh, they, he said they got all these big generals. They always bully the other country. So one day he said, uh, we get stuck in this war. We want to settle it. Let's have a one to one battle." You know, so that one to one battle. Okay, so this country A stand out Goliath, very big size. Country B, nobody there to go out and fight with them because you fight with Goliath, you die. Okay? Then suddenly David come up. Huh? Okay, David say, okay, I will go. Now David, very small size. Okay, cannot fight with Goliath. Okay, but then David won the thing. Okay? So that was the story. Uh. So it's the dog, it's a story of underdog. How when you're weak, you are strong. But actually, when they look at it, it's not like that. No? In during that time, when the, the time David and Goliath, your army depends uh, uh, can be folk, can be categorized into three types. Uh. The first type is called uh, infantry. Infantry is the one who fight with spear and uh, fight with uh, uh, whatever shield. Infantry army. Number two is cavalry. Cavalry is what? Cavalry is on the horse. You attack with the horse. Okay, you you are on a horse. Cavalry is very very fast. Number three is slingers. Now slingers is they put a rock into a slingshot, okay, and then they swing the slingshot and then they throw at you. So that is that is slingers, okay. So you have three groups of army. Now if you have a cavalry facing the infantry, who will win? Huh? On the horse or the one on the ground? On the ground will win. Why? Infantry will win because infantry their spears are very long. They just put the spear there. Ah, come on. <laughs> Okay, you come, you wet, you die. And then uh, now cal infantry, if you if you have you face with slingers, who will win? Slinger is the one who sling the rocks at you. Slinger will win. Because the slinger will whack you, and slingers are very, very good. They can attack you at more than 100 meters. Uh. You know what's 100 meters, right? Imagine swimming pool uh, is 50 meters, double that size, and they hit you with pinpoint accuracy. That means I want to hit that area, they just hit that area. And they are trained. Okay? They sing, 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 and they whack you with let's say they, they whack you with this ball like, like a baseball like that. You go right into your right into your hip pop, finish. Okay, so the slinger will definitely win the infantry. Slinger and cavalry who win. Slinger whack a group of people running in the horse. Cavalry will win now, why? You can't hit them, they are very fast. Before you hit them, they reach already, right? Then they whack you, you can tell now, right? So these slingers, they, they cannot fight. They can only know they are trained to sling me. Can tell now. Okay, so basically, these three is like what? It's like rock, paper, and scissors. Okay, so each one will be good at one, and then it will lose to the other. All right? So in the case of David and Goliath, Goliath is an infantry. It's very big, huge muscle, and all those things. Now, David... David is a slinger. 
right? He don't have to fight with you, right? From 15 meters away, he already see you, he starts swinging the thing, right? <laughs> that is so bad, David. You can say not. So the story of David and Goliath says that actually, if you look deeper, it is not really an upset. Okay, then he came up with a lot, a lot of stories, very interesting stories, the whole book like you read, uh, you, you really fall in love with this. Why? Well, look at says, you know, sometimes the underdog, we just don't understand, but they have particular strength. They are very, very good at something, okay? Uh, adapt. Why success always starts with failure? How they adapt, okay? So this is Tim Hufford. You know, these are two books like Tim Hufford. This is also Tim Hufford. It's one of the most famous famous economist writer today, popular economics, you read Tim Harvard, uh, all these stories. Stay is about behavioral economics, okay? So uh, people behavior are very funny, okay? For example, uh, let's say IKEA. Why people buy, like to buy IKEA? Who has done Anyone IKEA fan here? Oh. Got right? Well, why people like to buy IKEA? You tell me why, what's the reason? Because of the environment, the stock. What else? Huh? The meatballs. Fantastic. Because of the meatballs, okay? Finish meatballs. Now, so what else? Yes. The environment is one of the key because uh, if you go to a furniture shop, you see all beds, right? All chairs and all. But if you go to IKEA, you will see the whole living room. Right, you will see this is the bedroom. You see this is the kitchen. Right, this is the living room. So everyone, you use the, all the all the all the whatever the the furniture is all there. You can see the whole thing. Pretty interesting. Right, so people love it, and it's also a base. Once you get in there, you cannot go out. You have to follow the whole thing. Right, then you come out. Ikea, some of right. The most important thing uh, why people buy Ikea is because of what we call the Ikea effect. You go back, you assemble yourself. Correct. Right? Do you like assembly? A lot of people apparently love assembly. <laughs> the reason why they buy IKEA is because they assemble. And after you assemble the thing, you feel that this thing, I make one. It looks more beautiful because you make one, correct? Right, so we call that IKEA effect. People have this bias, right? So something that they make, right, or they feel that it's part of its effort is in the thing, suddenly the value will increase many, many times. So they're willing to pay more. Just for that, we call it the Ikea event. Okay, now, right? So tonight you go home, okay? If your mom cook a, a, a dinner or whatnot, what must you say? Oh, mom, this is so beautiful, it's so nice. Even the restaurant cannot beat you. <laughs> right, because your mom cook it. Right? So basically, they, 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 they place extra value on that. Okay, so this application. Uh -huh. So basically, those those are the things, right? So understand, they look at all these, uh, all these behaviors. Also, a lot, a lot of stories. Now, all these books is about ideas. Okay. Now, this is a bit uh, a new. Talks about the the Apple, Google, and all those. Why they are so powerful? What is their source of their strength? Okay. Whole new mind. Right. Today, with all this AI, a lot of focus on chat GPT and whatnot. That you don't need to study. Actually, human being workers need different skills already. Right. So, what type of skills do you need? So this book is very important, right? It's more than 10 years already, but still, I think all the, all the things here, okay? So generally, when you when you are in, uh, uh, if you are thinking of going into business and all those things, uh, you need to learn all these ideas, right? And when you get this, you get it for three days. Can get it, okay? Now, reading is a dialogue with oneself, it's self-reflection, cultivates profound humanity. Reading is essential to our development, expand and reaches the personality like a seed that germinates after a long time and stands for many blossom-laden branches. Okay, nowadays, uh, because things are changing so fast, what we need really is, we have a lot of problems, new problems, environment, inequality, much, much. What happens is we need new solutions now to how many solutions it is, our workers today, all of you, uh, must be, most important, must be creative, right? So the question now is, because no, nobody knows what is the problem, all these problems are needed, right? But to solve this problem, you need to be creative. Now, the next question is, how do you become creative? How does one become creative? Knowledge, 
you need to read a lot, right? Then and you read a lot, then somehow you think that, hey, I know how to solve this problem. You don't know how you know it, but you just know it. Actually, you, you, you before that, you have read somewhere and you can apply all these things. Okay, so that's why at this point in time, read a lot, a lot of books. Right, important. Huh? Okay. All right, any questions? Oh, 10.30 already almost. Yeah? No questions? Okay, uh, okay. last uh, commercial. Uh, I'm from this Victoria University. We do business program. All right, so if you are interested in business, right, you just ask them. All right, so uh, specialization includes accounting, supply chain management, finance, uh, marketing, right, all, all the typical business program, all those things will be in this uh, uh, Victoria University. All right, so uh, thank you very much. Bye-bye.